this lecture we are going to talk about sum and every method so without wasting any further time let's just quickly get into it okay so what sum and every does let me show you first an example of includes what includes does okay so i'll again take this array i'll copy this one and then i'll paste it here okay so includes i think you guys are familiar by now it will simply check if the element is present in the array it is in it is included in the array as a name specifies then it returns a boolean value whether it is present then it will be true or it else it will be false right so arr dot includes then we just pass the number okay so yeah now this element is present here so that's why we are getting true here right so let's pass minus 44 and then this element is not present here that is why we are getting false so same thing we can do in the sum and every method as well so now let's see an example of sum okay dot sum we will be using and here we have to pass a callback function okay so let's just pass a callback function let's say element okay i'll use the arrow function yeah so now here we have to pass a condition if the elements matches the condition then the sum method will return true or false so as its name specifies it just it will just check the condition on some element if it if any of the element if any one element matches this condition then the sum will return true okay otherwise it will return false so the thing to note here is at least one of the elements should match the condition so as to sum to return true okay so let me write it down quickly here at least one should match the condition okay okay so let's pass a condition let's say i want an element which should be greater than uh, minus 3 okay uh, i need an extra space here so now let's just quickly log it and then let's see what we are getting okay so now this sum will check if there is any element at least one element which is matching the condition uh, which is satisfying basically this condition then it will return true right away okay so let's uh, let's analyze our array we have few elements here right so let's say i want to get an element which is greater than 10 then let's see what happens okay so I think greater than 10 also we have it's 24 already available right so let's just pass 25 and we have to make sure 25 is not there okay so now no element is matching this condition that is why we are getting false here this sum method is returning false because none of the element is satisfying this condition none of the elements are greater than 25 right but if I make it 23 because there is one element which is greater than 25 right uh, sorry 23 right which is 24 that means at least one of the element should uh, satisfy the condition so as to return true so as for the sum to return true okay now we have a cousin of the sum method which is every so as its name specifies like it will check the particular condition in each and every element so each and every element have to satisfy the condition which we have passed here so as to every method to return true okay so let me just copy this thing and let me just paste it at at least it should be not at least
each and every element should match the condition so as to every to return true okay else it will return false okay so this is a thing what every does okay so yeah now every will check each and every element in this array which is present in this array if at least one of the element is failing this condition then it will return false right away okay so now let's change it back to um, let's see what is the shortest number we have i think it's minus 4 so let's pass minus 5 so all the elements are greater than minus 5 right i think minus 6 is also there oh, my bad guys i missed this one so let's pass minus 7 okay let me just quickly save it every element it's still returning uh, false here for some reason okay so okay 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 i got it guys so we have still few more numbers bigger than smaller than minus 7 so let's just pass minus 50 okay so now it is returning true because all the numbers are greater than minus 50. So it is making sure like all the elements in the array are matching this condition, are satisfying this condition. So it is like uh, you have a class which have some students. So you will allow only those students to come into the class who have the ID card. Okay, so we can consider that an, as an example. So if at least one of the student doesn't have the ID card, then we won't allow any student to come into the class. So what we are saying here, like we want every each and every student to have the ID card, then only I will allow every student to come into the class. Okay. Otherwise, I won't even allow even a single child to come inside the class. So at the same thing is what every does. Okay. And in case of some, what it is saying, like, if uh, at least one user or at least one student have the ID card, then you guys can come you guys can bring your id cards tomorrow as well that is totally fine okay so at least one student should have the id card so as to enter the enter into the class but here in this case the teacher is quite strict so he is not allowing any of the student if any one student doesn't have the id card okay so that is i think a better analogy for these these two examples so yeah and one more thing guys if you can see uh, like we are passing the exact same condition in both the methods, right? So I'll show you a nice little trick here. What we can do, we can maintain drive principle here, right? So I'll just copy this particular condition, this particular callback. Okay, I'll just cut it at, actually. Okay, and then I'll paste it here. every l greater than or just pass the condition let's just write condition i don't want to make this variable complicated okay and let's just paste this okay so now we have a callback function written here okay this is a shorthand of the arrow function if you remember from one of the previous lectures so now we can pass the exact same variable instead of the callback function like this okay and it will work the exact same way the way it was working earlier okay so now what we are doing uh, we have created a function we have stored it in a variable and then this variable we are passing as a callback function in our array methods okay so this way what will happen if we change anything in this function it will get applied immediately to all the places where this function this callback function is being used okay so this way we can maintain a drive principle as well and that is a good habit for the especially for the beginners right so yeah uh, with this 
being said like uh, this is it for this lecture